We're leaving Camp de Mar. We've had to accelerate our passage plan. The biggest fear of my life. 20 knots of wind on the nose. One part of this journey for us is making sure we immerse ourselves in the local culture. Last time after crossing to the island of Mallorca, you might remember we had a few mishaps in Camp de Mar. However, the journey had to continue, so we set sail to the next stop. Heading to Andrax just for a couple of nights of reprovisioning and hopefully getting full night of rest. Let's see if we can get in safely to the marina in Andrax. Possible that they can cling to a cliff like that. I love Talia, but honestly, if you offer me that kind of house over there, I wouldn't say no. Look at that, how amazing it is. We have a perfect view on the ocean. This part of Mallorca is definitely beautiful. It's very rocky, it's very mountainous, and I love it. Here comes a little fishing boat trawling a net. They really know how to send out the welcome party for me, don't they? Just what I like. Send me another trawler, Spain. Hey everyone, so we arrived yesterday in Port d'Antraxt. Uh, we're gonna stay here for two nights. So this morning we are doing a bit of administrative work. So we are already thinking of the next stops. Because Belgium is now refusing to let people leave Belgium and go to Spain because Spain is in the Covid red zone. We've had to accelerate our passage plan from the Balearic Islands here and make our way to Italy as soon as possible because we need to get over to Belgium for a couple of days. We want to have at least some peace of mind that we're going to be able to return to the boat. We're going to race from where we are here in Andrax up and around the island of Mallorca and make our way to Menorca and then jump from Menorca on a two-day sail to Sardinia. It's daunting and... No one likes to feel pressure, but we've got to do what we've got to do. Drink coffee, for example. <laughs> port Dentrax is a charming port in the southwest of Mallorca. Although we only stayed two nights, we really enjoyed this picturesque fishing village, which is also one of the classiest holiday destinations of the island. We wanted to take a quick moment to celebrate our first 500 subscribers. The positivity and advice we've received from you guys has really encouraged us to keep on filming our journey and sharing with you on YouTube. Really guys, thanks for following along and being part of the adventure. If you're new here and like what you see, please hit the subscribe button down below. It's a great way to support our channel. Hello everyone, so we are ready to leave Port d'Andraxt today and we are going to go to Soler. 
Uh, Luke is just checking the engine before leaving and then I think we'll be good to go. The lunch is ready. We did the checkout at La Marina at the Oficina. Um, so I think everything is good to go. One hour later. So after a handful of delays in Andrax, we're finally off. We're about an hour behind schedule, which is a little bit upsetting because there's some strong wind predicted uh, later this afternoon. So we want to get there as soon as possible and ideally use some of this wind. Let's see. I think uh, for the sake of precaution, we'll reef the sail, put the, the first reef in the, the main sail as we take off. There's gusts of 20 knots expected, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. And this boat, we've sailed with a reef in the main sail before and she still goes at a decent clip. So uh, let's see how that plays out. sailing without any engine on and I just had the biggest fear of my life I think but we got a very strong gust of wind and uh, the boat healed a lot like really it's uh, crazy if you think about it because right now we've got 3.7 knots of apparent but we've gone through this channel between the island of Dragonera and Mallorca and uh, we just got this this corridor of air or whatever you call it that uh, mm. picked up quickly and uh, and gave us a bit of a push we're but, not used to it yeah and it tried to turn the boat into the wind as it normally does and into the wind was on the mountains here oh, the guardia civil has just arrived ah oh, yeah i can see that so this morning as we were rounding the cape between a place called St. Elm in Mallorca and the island of Dragonera. We had a bit of wind that we were able to switch off the engine and sail with a nice following sea and a nice following wind. And then all of a sudden as we were rounding the cape, this strong catabolic wind came off the mountain of, around where this place St. Elm is and just really gave us a, a, a strong fright. Laura and I immediately uh, let the jib sheet and the main sheet ease out. For Laura, she was most concerned about the healing, the weather helm of the boat, whereas I was most concerned about careering into a multi-million dollar uh, super yacht or, uh, or the mountain. Yeah, we were a little bit shaken, but uh, I think we did the right thing and uh, eased the sheets quick enough so that we could then go with the wind out to sea. But here we are now, uh, an hour or so later and there's absolutely no wind whatsoever we've got the engine back on and we're making our way slowly north and uh, hopefully should be in Soyer or Soler in the next uh, what three hours what do you think Admiral of wind on the nose. I think docking is going to be very interesting. <laughs> Hopefully it should be okay. I'm, I'm confident. I know Luke has the good skills. He knows a lot. So 
I'm sure we'll do it well. The closer we got to the harbour, the more the wind picked up. By this stage, we'd douse the sails, running under engine alone. Gradually, the strong winds shifted to the port side of our bow, and I started having visions of our light displacement boat losing steerage and careering into the rocky coastline. Fortunately, the Admiral was on hand to keep spirits high, and Talia held her course and guided us into a considerably less windy harbour. With the nerves still a little raw, and not an insignificant wind, it took me three attempts to get Talia at the right angle to get her into the slip. Despite the VHF calls announcing our arrival to the harbour master, this was the first port we'd visited where no marineros helped us tie up. Fortunately, a kind soul on one of the neighbouring boats gave us a hand. Good morning, everyone. So this is the first day here in Soyer, Port de Soyer, and we have decided to go to Soyer, the, the town in the mountains. And we're going to take the tram for that. It's going to be quite nice because it's a very vintage tram. We'll see some beautiful landscapes, so I can't wait. One part of this journey for us is making sure we immerse ourselves in the local culture. So it's always very important to learn at least hello, goodbye, thank you, please, all those sorts of basic things. So here in Mallorca, it's hallo, auf Wiedersehen, Dankeschön, Bitteschön. Remember that, kids. I trust our German friends won't take offense at the tongue-in-cheek. It's just a joke, guys. Mallorca sometimes feels like a German colony. In fact, many of the locals here learn German to cater to the considerable tourism coming from Deutschland. But there's no denying the typical Spanish flair as you look around. So we just came back from Soyer and we didn't take the tram back to the port because we had to wait too long for it, like two hours. So we decided to walk from Soyer to the Puerto and it was a really nice walk. I have to say that I really enjoyed this morning. We were really lucky because every Saturday there's a local market. We really enjoy it. We um, bought a couple of stuff. The atmosphere over there was really really nice. Uh, all these little and narrow streets. It felt really good to just walk together with Luke. I had a really good day and I'm just ready to leave now. I mean we're not gonna leave today. We still have a couple of stuff to do this afternoon before leaving tomorrow and cross to Menorca. So let's see! Tune in next week as we face the high seas on our way out of Soler.
and make our crossing to the northernmost of the Balearic Islands, Menorca. So, we're leaving Soyer. We are excited to discover a new island and we still have like around seven or eight hours to go, so it's gonna be a long day. 